you're gonna have to kick something else out eventually. Okay, so the MLS, share my screen. I'm gonna share right here. Okay, so um, so on the very first page, when you go to DAOR.com, you you're here and it, it's got some stuff that you'll never go back to looking at. <laughs> but um, just it's worth saying that there are some useful things. Um, you probably notice a lot of these things, see some of these ads that come up when you go into the MLS, those ads are there. Um, anyways, okay, so once you get into the MLS, you end up here. And you're not quite here, you are here. This is what this is what you see when you go into the MLS right there. Um, so some of the announcements that I saw on the other screen are here on this side. Um, it's something called a market watch. So this is the entire MLS. It's kind of crazy. If you have contacts that you've put in, and we're going to do that today, if there's contacts you put in, in for yourself to, to do a search for, um, you can see kind of them there and so on. So pretty, pretty basic. Um, all right. So here it goes. We have all these tabs at the top. So my matrix, we've got home, which is where we are, a summary. I'm going to check it out because I don't remember that. Okay. So that's a, that's a summary of all my contacts I have and any of my listings that are active right now. Um, carts, I'm going to skip that. Contacts is what we just talked about. Auto emails, we're going to talk about that later. In other words, we're going to set up an auto email and it's we're going to end up here. You can do a search and save it and come back to it. That's here. Any email that you ever sent to anybody ever is here. So you're like, oh, shoot, I deleted the email I sent to myself or they can't find it. You can go back and find it under sent email. Same thing, any CMA that you've ever done now uh, is going to be here. The only problem with that is it's never labeled, even myself. Even if you label it 6767 Sandy Lane Riverside, um, like because that's the that's the home you were doing a, a, um, a market analysis on. It won't say that here. So you're just going to see. Actually, I'll just show you real quick. Why not? See, see how it says unnamed. So I guess I can go in and I could rename it possibly. Oh. But I just it never happens. But you can look at you can look at your previous um, ones that you did. And this is not in the right order. If you want to change it by the order, you can do it by when you created it last created oh there you go so now i've now i've um, sorted it by the one i did most recently which was with this one on fineville <clears throat> and so then i can view it i can edit it i can email it or if i need to uh, get it off the intranet i can delete it whatever so anyway so it's just that it doesn't show it here that's the only thing is you have to go in and look no big deal no big deal all right. If you have a watched listing, you can look at it here. And then finally, you can look at your my listings. And under my listings, here's, these are all the active residential listings I have. And active would also be pending or even on hold. If it was on hold, it would be here. Um, you have if, all the. If your deal went pending or if you put it's it on. It's still hold, under active. Under my listing. Under my listings, Yeah. So you can see the status. These two are active, these two are pending. This is active and this is active under contract, which is also pending, okay? Yeah. Okay, one other thing. Um, and again, you can do you can look at all the different other types. So these are some leases that we have out there that are in, are in the MLS and so on. And one, one more, I'll just show you one more. Residential income on McFarland and Eastman, these are units. Like So McFarland is a triplex and Eastman is a um, duplex. So, okay, so that's under my matrix. Search, we're gonna spend all our time here, so I'm gonna skip it for now. Add edit. So the add edit button is to add a listing or edit a listing. There's two ways to go and add or edit a listing. One way is here. So if I'm gonna have a brand new listing and I'm gonna put it in, the MLS, I hit add edit, and then I click on add new. And then I say, what type of listing is it? 
Is it a residential, like a condo, a house, or a townhouse? Is it a lease? And so on. And so you just go through there, and the next thing it will ask you for is your um, the APN number of the property, and it'll ask you for the county. After you put the APN and the county, you hit the button, it auto-populates majority of the stuff, like bedrooms, bathrooms, year built, you know, lot size, all that, okay? But I'm not going to go through and do that right now, but I just wanted to show you that. Okay, finance. This is good stuff. Um, so the one that I use the most is this seller's estimated net proceeds. And I do have a video on this one, and I will show you in a, in a different class that. But on this one, just real quick, so I can put in, I can put in uh, someone's name. I can put the address. Okay. It's kind of like what we like if I tell escrow, like, hey, I need a net sheet on this property. Yes. I can I can do it myself. So many times mm -hmm. escrow companies don't want you to bother them to do a net sheet when you don't even have the listing. Okay. And so this is perfect. Yeah. This is perfect. And so in the video, I teach you like, like, you know, to calculate the escrow fee, it's two dollars and twenty-five cents per thousand plus a three fifty base, the title. There's a little sheet you can use, a cheat sheet, things like that. Um, I do a video on LeBron James' house. So, all right. Roster, if you need to look up an agent, you can go under roster. And so I'll just show you one real quick. Um, so um, you want to know where this agent is. And so here we go. And of course, it didn't work. I don't know how to spell names apparently. So here, let's do, um, um, let's do, it sounds like the, when you're cleaning a keyboard. Okay, so here's, why won't it work? Oh, there it goes. So then you have Armando and all that good stuff. You can find you can find people, basically. Okay. So it's just the office information? For them and DRE. And so you can go here and you can go to the DRE website. You click the if you click the hyperlink of their of their uh, DRE number, it shows you how long they've been licensed, if they have any disciplinary actions and stuff like that. So all right. Okay, so the next one is stats. Um, you can look up stats to see how a certain agent sells houses. How you know who's the number one agent in an area? Or if you know, you can do that under stats. I won't go there right now. Realist. I am going to show just a little brief intro on realist. And so here's realist. Realist is your friend. Realist can play detective for you. So if you are going on a listing appointment, you need to look in Realist to get the information on the property first. Like this is the first place you start before you do a market analysis, you start here and there's a video that uh, I could share with you about doing a market analysis. But let's try, let's try this, 10703 Woodruff. And so you can search by address, you can search by owner name, you can search um, by APN number, and there's a couple other things you can do that I'm gonna share with you in a second. So you can see here, oh, look, it's Michael and Berdellis' house uh, on Woodruff. You can see at the top when the last sale was, was in 2012 for 390,000. And you can see the square footage and the lot size and the year built, bedrooms, bathrooms, and so on. Can see the you know about a little bit information about the owner. Um, it's got the APN right here six two eight five zero two eight zero zero seven, and if you are doing a market analysis, you need that APN number to complete your market analysis. So you can have the subject. So you can have the subject in your market analysis. So you can show, um, 
So you can show that here's my comparables, but here's the subject house and it is three bedroom, two bath, so such square footage and so on. Um, um, go ahead. Well, down there somewhere it says it gives a value to the home. Do you ever pay attention? To I that don't now? pay attention at all. No. No. Nope. Just to the comparables? Yes. What yes. Yeah. So it says that, I mean, it's not bad. Here's, yeah. here's, Here's the realist version of the as estimate. That's fine. Um, but um, okay, I want to share one thing, one thing with you. So you see how it says bedrooms two and bathrooms <laughs> three. Um, sorry, bedrooms two under tax records, and in the but it says in the tax records it says bedrooms two, but in the MLS it says three. So what's oh. going on there? When they, uh, set, they didn't get permits for the new one there. Right. Okay, so they may not have gotten permits. So the first, the, that's the number one, what Pablo said is the number one thing. That should be a red flag that should raise your eyebrow to go, maybe I need to look into it. Okay. The second part, though, on this particular house, the square footage, if you measure it, it is actually this. It's just in these times when they built this house and this track, they were two in a den but the den has a closet. Mm. So it's, it's okay. It's, um, it's considered a third bedroom. So in that neighborhood, in that neighborhood over there, two in a den or the den was a third bedroom. Okay. All right. So that is, Question. go ahead. When we're comparing, comparables. Um, and there it's, that bedroom, the third one's not registered. Yes. Do we compare with what is registered or what we have? So we, for for what purpose? What are you comparing? Compare. Okay. So, I mean, it's something. what's reality and what's permitted. Okay. But I'm not worried about this. I just wanted to point this one out. I'm not worried about the bedroom count. I know it's three. There's a closet. I don't care whether you call it a two bedroom yeah. or a three bedroom. But for but for the purpose of selling this sucker, the agent that sold me the house, Vicki Spearman, by the way, um, put three herself. And you know how Vicky is by the book. But even Vicky knew better to not put two bedrooms in the computer when she listed it. Because quite frankly, two bedrooms for that price at the time, putting it for, as a two bedroom home, you're not going to sell it. You're not going to get someone that's going to find you in the computer. That's the problem. So even she was like, okay, I don't, oh, yeah, I want to sell this sucker. Yeah. You're not going to find this house if you put two bedroom. So she doesn't, she wants to sell it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and then the last part that I want to bring your attention to with regard to, so, oh, this is cool. So you can see the last time it was in the MLS. Oh, wait. I told you I bought it. You saw when I bought it. You're like, okay, well, what's this monkey business? Why Why is this here? Um, what this was, was my licensed assistant at the time, Rosie, when I put it in the MLS, I put it under her uh, ID for rental. And I rented this house out to somebody. I didn't want to put it under me because I owned it, whatever. But um, the last time it was in the MLS in 2016, I was renting it for $26.50. The point is, though, you can click on this hyperlink and it'll show you a, it'll show you the uh, what what it looked like. So if you see it here, you can see and you can see when I rented it for twenty six fifty. Ta da! That was the house. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I wanted to really share you with you was this part here where it shows the the sales history is really important. Um, you can see when they bought it last. You can see if they've done any monkey business with deeds, transferring it between people. It's the bottom. Right here, this line. Yeah. And you can see I've done nothing since 2012. Um, uh, shame on me. I haven't put my pro this property in a trust. I don't have a trust, I know. Don't go, do don't go get run over by a bus today. Um, <laughs> so, but anyways, so I've done nothing. But a lot of times you will find, oh, they did an interspousal deed, taking that the wife off, or they took, you know, added someone, whatever. You can see stuff like that. One more thing. 
you can see if they've ever refinanced. And boring Michael has never refinanced. Is this is where it comes up to like if they're behind, like lease pending? So, so if forward. they were behind, there's one more section below mortgage called foreclosure history, and it would be here. If they've really had a notice of default filed against them, it will show here. Okay. All right. So how do we get past my AI companion here? Oh, shoot. All right. Okay. The last one I want to share with you is the following links. And this one is really good. Um, so if you have a license in Hawaii and you want to sell a house in Hawaii, you can go look up the MLS in Hawaii. Um, if you want to look at some other reciprocating, and I, I think I just said that and look at that, they've taken Hawaii out. It used to be here. That's why I said that. But um, you can look at San Diego system, even though CRMLS a lot of times uses um, the San Diego area, many homes you will find in your CRMLS, you won't have to go into this Paragon system. However, the one that I do want to note, even though they reciprocate with us, is called CLAW. In fact, an agent in the office, Tanya, has a listing for $4.9 million. And it is in West LA and those West LA agents um, have their own MLS called the MLS. Mm -hmm. They're above all of us. <laughs> the MLS. <laughs> the MLS. You can see their little logo right here. The MLS right there. PWR would come up here too or what? Huh? Like PWR. No. So PWR uses CRMLS. PWR is just an association it's just a local association like D like, like greater Downey or like Rancho. So power PWR power, whatever is just another association, but all of those associations use CRMLS to um, share their listing data. So this is in the event that you have to do it in an area. Where it, they don't in the event CRMLS. that you don't, however, CRMLS has done a good job of gobbling up most of California. Yeah. yeah. But um, so that's there. Here are some that you do need to reciprocate. So here, okay, I was right. So there's Hawaii. So if you want to look up some stuff in Hawaii, you can look right there. Um, okay, Miami. Ooh. All right. Okay. I want to just share before I go on to the stuff that we're really here to do, which is doing a search. Just want to share with you some of the other applications. Um, cloud CMA is a way to do an, a market analysis. I'm not going to show you here in the market analysis class and video. I share with you the cloud CMA app or application or website. It incorporates the data you take from CRMLS with the cloud CMA to make a pretty, a pretty CMA. It's pretty, but I don't like it, but that's okay. I'm not here to give my opinion quite completely. All right. Um, there's different applications. Glide is a way to do um, your AVIDs, your transfer disclosures with clients. Um, I use the zip forms with my DocuSign, but Glide is a way to be on the go and do your disclosures right there at the house. I've tried the AVID. I've tried the Avid before. Um, okay, the real reason I went into links is to show you InfoSparks, but I am going to share a couple more with you. So Rent Spree is the newest way that you can manage your properties, your rental properties for a client. So if you are going to help somebody rent something out and you put in the MLS and, or you use zip forms to um, give the application to the tenant, you can make it in conjunction with rent spree. So when they, you can actually send the tenant, the prospective tenant, a rent spree link, they will pay 38 or $39 per person. And it will fill out a complete rental application with credit included. And you as the property manager or agent helping your client to rent the house out, did nothing but send them the link 
and they pay the money and then it sends you the information, you verify it, you get an email and you verify it and then um, you can share it with your client too. And the application they're filling out is the, um, the zip form car application. And then they include pay stubs in there and the credit. The only thing it doesn't include is a background check that Zillow does. So Zillow uses that. Um, one other thing, I think you may have to ask the tenant for their a copy of their ID. Okay. Another cool application that I'm going to share since I'm here is Savvy Card. Savvy Card is a way to um, share your business card with a client or another agent. I'm not going to get into it here, but check it out and it sends you a pretty cool business card, digital business card. Um, the negative on it that I've noticed is when I send it to the person, when I, I receive a lot from agents, some savvy cards. And the only thing I don't like is um, it, um, it sends, it takes a while to load I get the business card, but it's not the pretty, it, you can't see it. It's just a link, but yeah. then it loads. It takes about 20 seconds and all of a sudden, Oh, all of a sudden I can see their business card. It pops up on my text. So that's the only kind of weird part, but it's pretty convenient. The other part about savvy card is when you send it to them, if you click on it, you can add it to your contacts. So you have to download it. You have to download, right. Yeah. Alex, this is the one I was That's talking. what we're talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So. And then your face is supposed to pop out. Yeah. But you have to contact. Yeah, and it, I think it, it's free for Greater DOR members. Yeah. It's a free. It's, be, it's a free member benefit. Another one, but it was also having some weird issues when I would send it to people. Really? So I realized I have to save their number first before I even send it to them. Uh, if I send it to them with their number not saved in my contacts, for some reason they can't open it. Yeah. Do you that use that? Hmm? Savvy card, S A V V Y. Yes. Do you use a Michael? I don't. I don't. Although I need to, I need to uh, update my digital business card that Joey made for me because I, it's like six years old. Uh -huh. six, it's six, I, year, six years ago. What I did notice is when you go in there and look at property, you get an email of what that person is looking. If they use the savvy card, oh, that's very cool. I used it. That's, yeah, I cool. Okay. that's a good, uh, that's a good thing to have. Yes. To see <laughs> All right. So if you are on your phone, the best app on your phone that is in conjunction with the MLS is MLS touch. 100%. CRMLS, CRMLS has its own app as well. It's pretty good. Um, let me see if I actually have it myself. I do. So CRMLS has its own app. I haven't logged in in a really long time, so it's not going to work. Yeah, okay. I have to sign in. But um, I use MLS Touch on a daily basis, constantly. And um, so if you go to your CR, if you go to it, I'll just show you real quick what I love most about it. Um, you can do a map search now, and they've made this so easy. They've made it as easy as using the MLS. The, the two things recently that they added was they made the map search easier. And then the second thing is they made the tax records almost as good as the tax records here. Mm. So like now that the, I almost don't need it. They've all, all also added so many extra fields when you're looking at a listing. Um, let me see if I can find one. Fields in. So now in so here's this one on Hailden. Actually, wait one second. Sorry, guys. So here's this one on Hailden. And so when you, um, you can click on the map and see the map, you can look at all the pictures. That's very obvious. Okay, nothing big there. 
You can hit the share button and text it to a client and they're seeing what you're seeing minus the agent and showing information. Okay. <laughs> um, they got the description of the house, which is really nice. Um, they've got listing information, which is uh, used to have commission, of course, now doesn't. It's got the schools, if they put schools in there. It's got showing information that shows how to show it. And it also shows private remarks, no showings until a certain day. It's fine and pretty good. And then it's got the history. So that's really neat. Okay. So that's MLS Touch. I highly recommend it. All right. But the real reason, the real reason I always love to show um, these extra links is for InfoSparks. InfoSparks is my little cheat sheet. The other night, I had a listing appointment, excuse me, last Saturday, I took a listing and I really wanted to list it for 1-1. It's on Fineville. It's not on the board yet, but I wanted to list it for a million one. The lady said, my granddaughter told me I should list for no less than 1.2. So we compromised and we did a million 150. But then the granddaughter from out of state um, called her and said, grandma, you should list for 1.5. And I said, may I talk to your granddaughter? <laughs> Again, I listed for a million 150. I think it's worth a million 50 to a one one. We're at a million 150. She wants to list for 1.5. I said, may I have an appointment with her? Sure. We spoke two nights later in the evening. She works for Boeing. She's an engineer, very detailed. And we went through my market analysis. I texted her the market analysis. We went through it. She heard everything, everything I said. She came off of her 1.5 horse. She did. She came off of it. And she goes, okay, fine. Let's try 1.3. And I said, what's the basis of you saying 1.3? I just showed you the comps. I even showed you that 1.3 looks like this. And I did show her a house that was in the same square footage range of the subject house, but was on a double lot of hers. Like this house is 7,200. The, the one that sold for a million 305 was 13, 14,000 square feet, like double this. So where is she getting her information? So here's how she was getting it. So I even told her about that 1.3. So I said, why do you feel, even though I just showed you, it should be like at 1.1 1, 1, and we're going to compromise and do a million 150. Where do you think that it's 1.3? And here it goes. Well, when my dad died and they did an appraisal of the house, because her dad was co-owner of this house that I'm selling. When my dad died two years ago, it was appraised for a million dollars. Okay. And I know prices have skyrocketed since then. Okay. That's what she said. Yeah, she's from okay. Sky, okay. So I said, okay, I'd like to show you some data. So we did a little Zoom meeting together. <laughs> and we did this. And I pulled up InfoSparks. And I said, let's see how much has actually gone up in the last two years. So here's what I did. This is the entire MLS, by the way. This represents right now on the screen is the median price in all of the MLS. The median price in the MLS is 830,000, okay? But I can change it and do whatever I want. So with that girl from Boeing, I did this, Downey. And you have to be careful, pick, Downey City, okay? And it does get a little, you know, up and down. And um, here it is. So I said the following. Right now, the median price in Downey is 887500 You said two years ago? Two years ago? Okay. Let's take a little ride back in time to August of 22. So that's all you should. 
805, 804.950. So he said 804, and now we're at 887. That's about 80,000. Let's see. That's 10 That's 10 percent. 10 percent. So from a million dollars, guess what your grandma's house and dad's house was worth? One one. Game over. She actually said, "Okay, we can start at one million one fifty, but I'm not coming down from there." Eh, I still take that as a win. Fair. Yeah, it's a great win. Brought her down five hundred thousand dollars, basically. Right, four hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, did you know you were going to take this listing though? Because, like, I mean, I already had the listing. Oh, okay. Her aunt is the only signer. Her aunt is the only signer, but the aunt who claims I don't know a lot about real estate. I'm taking the advice. I'm taking the advice of my 25 year old <laughs> genius engineer uh, niece in the state of Washington, who just got a real estate license. Uh, well, it's, I'm just asking. So of course she knows. Of course she knows. It was. It was. This was a situation to bring somebody down on price, but it wasn't a situation to get a contract signed at a right price. I had the con. So you're saying like I have the contract signed. Now there's outside influences. Yes. There. And, and so I'm, and I'm basically. It's like a price. You you gave a, a, a class on price reduction almost right now. Yeah. As opposed to like, yeah. But so you see, like I'm not ready to put. It's not on the board here at the office yet yeah. because we're gonna. She's uh, grandma. Grandma is moving next week. Grandma is. I mean, grandma's stuff is being moved out next week. I'm gonna paint the house. I'm gonna get landscaper to clean it up. And then she's actually moving on October 2nd. And then we're going to go live. So Where is the, the peanut gallery, in the meantime, the peanut gallery is chirping. Oh. It's in, it's it's over in Northwest Downey on Fine Bell. So in, in, okay. in that case, um, are you... An overpriced listing is okay to take. Hey, Why was the, this one was just too far. Too far. Is basically what you're saying, like the five, the four. I'm not. I so I also had the attitude with this girl, mm -hmm. um, and I said it. Um, I'm not willing to list it that high. Okay. Pl pl plain right. and simple. Plain and simple. I'm not. I said, um, let me put it in. Let me put it in terminology you can understand, little girl. Um, your price is in outer space. <laughs> I didn't say. I didn't actually say that to her. So, so this is the only tool we use to show. Right. Okay. I mean, just you know, real quick. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you can you can you can use this for a couple of things. You can do so, like you see people do Instagram reels. Yes. Or put something on their story. You could put this on your story. Now, if you um, Jesslid gasped out loud when she saw this come on the screen, as opposed to the entire MLS. Because it's a bunch, you know, looks like an EKG. So I can flatten the curve for you. So here it goes. Ready? I can make I can make it. So see how it's all up and down, up and down. Watch this. All I did was take each each point is the average of the last six months. It takes the average. This point here is the average of the last six months. This point here is the average of the last six months. Hi, Mario. Hey. It's like you zoomed in basically to the. Right. And I again, it's called flattening the curve. Right. So I made it not look as crazy. Okay. Right. But um, where this is every month data point. Um, okay. So you could use this to say the following. You can use this to share with people the median sales price in a neighborhood. You can use this to do the average sales price. Almost the same. Okay. You can use this to show how many closed sales there are, which by the way, there are 64 closed sales this last August. And you could see like a year ago in August, a year ago in August, there was 82, uh, 82. So we are sluggish. We're sluggish this year compared to last year. So that's something you could show someone. You could show someone the percent of list price when something sells. So this show this shows you what did something sell compared to the list price, the original list price. And so you can see that for the most part, things are selling at list price right now, but 
a little a couple months ago is at 101. You can see it was 102 last October. It was a little hotter. <laughs> 101. You can see, oh my goodness, 105. This was in May of 2022. Things were selling for 5% above the list price. So this kind of data is easy and you could share it. And if you're forget about the sharing part, it's also knowledge. Right. Okay. Um, you can learn how many active listings there are in Downey. And this is also, this is not just residential because right now residential, there's like 52. So this includes everything, by the way, everything in the MLS. You can see days on market. I love this one. How long does it take to sell something? Right now, the average is 16 days at the very end. It's 16. And you can see that we did have a point where like things were selling below list price. You saw that a little while ago. Things start to get a little slower. And that was in November, you know, the uh, fall of 22. It started, the, um, the sky started to fall. It did. I, I thought that was it. I thought I thought this was the beginning of the market correcting. But February came around and we started seeing multiple offers again. And here we are. All right. So just wanted to share this with you. The last thing I wanted to share with you, and I'm going to go back to the sales price, is let's say, and let me make this maybe a rolling three months, not quite as crazy. There you go. And let's say I want to share it. I can hit the share button and I can... Sh I can um, use this for social media or, or email, a PDF. And so I can hit the share button. I can hit copy the link and I can email it to myself or what have you. And then I can share it. Um, and so that's kind of nice. It'll come up on your phone. You can hit a uh, screenshot uh, and go from there. Good. Okay, moving on. The real reason we're here. All right, search. So. If you're searching for, um, if you're searching for houses, condos, townhouses, uh, own your owns, you go at under residential. If you're looking for residential income, is if you're looking for units. Residential lease is if you're looking for rentals for somebody. If you have a manufactured home in a park, that's here. You got commercial for commercial. You have commercial sale or lease or business opportunity. And if you're not sure what the heck you're looking for and you just want to see everything, you can hit cross property and you can search the entire MLS under any category is cross property. Okay. Public record is searching kind of like searching in the tax records. I'm not going to go there now. So we're going to spend the majority of our time here under residential. And so you've got detailed, which is what I'm going to spend my time on quick. If you just want to do, a quick search that doesn't have as many search parameters, you'd use quick. If you know the listing ID for a property, you can go there. And actually, let me show you that for a second. So if a client gave you a bunch of MLS numbers, or you were doing a search and you jotted them down, you can go back here, put all the MLS numbers with commas in between, and you can have all of them in one result. Commas in a space? Yeah, so you put you know, DW, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, comma, you know, RS, two, 24, whatever. So MLS number with a comma, MLS number with a comma, no space. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, the number goes up too. That's what I use like if- Yeah, like so if you had put the matches. And and it, then all of a sudden you put in five, but you only have four, then one of the numbers is off, right? Right, okay. yeah, exactly. Good one. All right, so that was that. If you have an address, you can go there. You want to see today's new listings if you want to do a cma this way um i've seen a couple agents try it and then um i'm not a fan of doing it that way but you can and if you want to create search parameters that are your own you can go there um okay one last thing before i start is here you can put an address right here so um if i put in I put in this, I put an address. I can see a list. I can see everything. But I'm going to say right now, the search toolbar at the top is very picky. If I put in street, I don't think it's going to work. It doesn't work yet. See, it's so finicky. Um, it won't let you do it for income property. It will only let you do it for active residential. It's pretty uh, kind of weird. Okay. 
Um, all right. I almost want to do a class on toolbar, but I need to learn the tricks first. Okay, so here we go. For for this toolbar, yeah. There's little codes you can put in. You can um, do a setting. You can put your pictures of the pictures of the homes in there. Oh sure. Wow. Sure. All right. So um, Pablo mentioned the count. Like how many listings do we currently have in the search we've set up? At the bottom here right now, it says 2,500 plus. Why? Because it's just taking the entire MLS. But the minute I do this, let's see what happens if I put active. Watch what happens. Okay, we still have a ton. <laughs> now we go, let's go Downey. Active in Downey. We've got 60 guys, we're up to 60. Okay. Inventory is going up and things aren't things aren't selling. <laughs> All right. So what today is about, we're going to do market analysis another day, but what today is about is how do I do a search in the computer? So let's say I'm looking for um, someone that says they want a three bedroom, two bath in Downey under a million dollars. So here's how I would do it. Active, Downey, bedrooms, Three plus. Hello. Okay. Bathrooms. I'm going to put under total two plus. And when it's under total, that means whether it's a half bath, a three quarters bath, or a full bath, it doesn't care. So two plus is good there. And then they didn't tell me a square footage, but you can see right now we start with 60. Right now we have 51 homes that are three or more bedrooms and two or more baths in the computer. But they told me they can go only up to a million. So I can do the following. I can go zero to a million. Or I can do a million minus. Okay. Or if you don't want some, some stuff that's like not nice, you can go like 800 to a million. You can do that 800,000 dash a million. So I'm just going to do this. And now I'm down to 24. Oh, but they told me they told you they don't want anything less than 1500 square feet. So I'm going to go into square footage and I'm going to put in 1500 plus. And now I'm down to 18. For example, okay? If they told you they want like maybe you're looking for condos and you know that some condos don't have garages. So you want to only get the houses that have a garage. You can go under garage spaces and put one plus or two plus. Mm -hmm. Careful with that because sometimes it could have a garage, but the agent didn't do a good job with putting in the computer, but just sharing that with you. All right. Um, sometimes you may want to search by area. Oh, by the way, sorry. Um, they only wanted a house. They didn't want a condo or a townhouse. So I'm going to click on single family and now I'm down to 14. Oh, but they wanted a condo instead. So let me undo that for just a second. Okay, so if you wanna do multiple, multiple selections at the same time, you hold the control button after you press the first one. So if I do, do condo, hold the control button and do townhouse, I now have two selections, condo and townhouse. So they're okay. control? Control on, on, a, on a Mac, it's the command button, but on on your computer would be a control button. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So single family residences, we've got, we're down to 14. Okay. Next part for area, different areas have different, uh, different cities have different codes for the different areas of the city. For example, in Downey, we are, we have four denominations, D1, D2, D3, and D4. The, Cross kind of the uh, borders would be Downey Avenue. Downey Avenue breaks up west with east, and Firestone breaks up, you know, north versus south. And so, if you have the Downey Avenue and uh, the Firestone, you end up with four quadrants. So, you end up with D1 being northeast, D2 being northwest, D3 being southwest, and D4 being southeast. However, 
you're welcome to use it. So like, let's say I had a client, they only wanted North Downey and they wanted to be D1, D2. So now I went from 14, I'm down to nine. Okay. But there's a caution to that. The caution is if the agent mislabels where they're at and the mo the number one mistake, it may be in South Downey and the agent will write D1 thinking, oh, oh all these things in Downey are D1 and they just put D1. And so I, I would almost bet you, do I, do I take the bet? I'm going to take the bet that at least one of these listings will be mislabeled. And even though it says D1, it's really not. And of course, they're all correct. Yeah. I lost. All right. Okay. So um, they're all good. And so, yeah. So if we look at our search, we can, we can do that. And now here we are. And so we're looking at the results. If you click the hyperlink, you can take a look at each listing. You can click on the picture and scroll through this way. Yes, exactly. by them all. Mm -hmm. Or you can click this button right here, uh, this little square button, and it'll show all the homes, all the pictures of the house on one thing that you can scroll and you can get out of that. And you can click on map and it'll show you a map of where the house is in relation to things. That's kind of cool. All right. A couple other interesting things. You can see the last time this there was a price change. They went from 899 to 8749. You can see how long it's been on the market, 56 days. You can see that they're saying that there's no garage. Is there truly no garage? Did they screw up? Yep, there's no garage. There's no garage. So they did that correctly. So it says size, lot size, days on market. If you click this APN, it will show you the tax records of the subject house. That's kind of cool. So you can kind of dig. Okay. And so on, you can see that there. Okay. Um, other things, so it shows the description, shows you information, shows you private remarks and showing remarks on how, you know, things you as an agent can see that the consumer can't see, okay? So use it to read it and see uh, how agents want to be contacted to show it. So you can see that this agent is a Redfin agent that, you know, works out of their house, doesn't have a brick and mortar office um, and is very techy. So they prefer you not call them, call showing time or use the showing time app, which I didn't show you by the way. And I will show you, I'll show you later. So um, actually let's just use this, let's use showing time. Let's say we want to schedule a, a showing for this house. We can go here and click this button right here, schedule a showing, or we could do it down there where I was a second ago. So if I click on schedule a showing, I want to show it. And so here it is. And I say, when, where, where did I do the, where I want to schedule, yeah, schedule single showing. And it says that on this particular, okay. So, oh, there you go. And so now I schedule my showing. When I finish showing, setting it up, it will, I'm not going to go through with it, but it will ask me, how do I want to be contacted? It was actually there on the screen. Um, you have to say that you're willing to get a text message and e email at least one form, an email has to be at least one of them. Uh, and then you'll get a text message or an email saying, oh, the listing agent has been contacted, stay tuned. And when they confirm you, oh, you'll get a new email saying you're confirmed or then they'll share, share other information. Um, some agents use showing time just so they know when people are going, but they set it up. You can set it up where when you get a showing request, you can make it where they auto, you automatically confirm them. You don't have to do anything, you just confirm it. But you just wanted to use the showing time app so you can keep track of who's going through the house. Why? Because then you could share with your client, hey, this is who's going to the house. It's it's a little fancier. You talked about comments. Um, if you wanna put a comment, it's through there. To, like the, to the agent? 
at the end, I think they it, send you like uh, give me a feedback. Give you feedback. feedback. Uh -huh. Is that true? There. It could be issue there, yes. yes. All right. So one other thing here. So I'm just trying to say, look at what they say. So this one says use showing time to set it up, right? Don't go to the house without using showing time. Okay. All right. <laughs> but then it says there's a Supra on the house and it's vacant. It says that right here. Supra and vacant. Fair. All right. This person uh, also put, you can see here, there's some other hyper or some other links. I like this one. This They put a virtual tour in there. So if I click that on, so if you actually add a virtual tour to the MLS for your listing, it ends up here and let's check it out. And so they use Matterport. So it's not like what Joey does where Joey gives you a YouTube link or video with a YouTube link. It's like this, but Matterport, you go like this, you click on the circle and voila, I'm in the room, so to speak, okay? All right, so that's this one. If you want to click to the next one, you can click next. But also, when you're on the listing, you can click on tax records. You can click just the photos. You can click the history of this sucker. You can click the parcel map. You can click flood map. Not very, not very useful in Downey. You can click foreclosure, open house, neighborhood. So is uh, the foreclosure open house is just for that property? Just for this, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of cool. Demographics and, and so on, okay? So I never, I forget it's here. Yeah. We always use just listing. Uh -huh. We don't never notice anything else, but just wanted to share that it's there. So we go to the next one. And so you can look at it, you can click on, so by the way, if I was, if I was happy with this one and I wanted to select it, I could hit the select button if I like here. And I can go through them like this. And ever, you know, I was just doing a search, right? And so on. And I was happy. I hit agent one line display and I go back to the original screen. You can see I've selected three houses. You can also see I've got other hyperlinks on the side as well. You can see other information here, days on market, all that good stuff. But now I want to, what I want to do with this is I want to email it to myself or I want to email it to the client. So I can hit that. I can hit, hit email and so on, and I can send it off to somebody. I can also use this information to print stuff to myself. So I can I can maybe print out the agent full, maybe with a map and hit hit command, hit uh, control and hit map. And then I can preview it. I can hit print to PDF and we can take a quick look at it. Yeah so, now, yeah, so so then it's here and we can scroll through these. And at the very end is a map that I chose. I love this map for showing property. I use just this at the least. I'll print just this out. If I don't want to print out a lot of pieces of paper and waste paper, I at least print this one out and then I write on it and I'll write like maybe the agent's number or something like that. The other thing I use when I'm showing property is at least if I have this, as I'm going from house to house, I use MLS Touch to help me how to navigate, you know, to look stuff up quickly because it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff on MLS Touch that's in this printed version. It's all my phone now. So there's really no reason to print it out. But if you have anxiety or it's your first time, by all means, print it out and, uh, and go from there. I mean, thank goodness you don't have to use this Thomas guide, <laughs> like I did when I started, I had to use this type of a, not Wasn't there a book too? There's a book, yeah, not this, the, the book. I had to use the Thomas Brothers guide book. <laughs> Were people still on time back then? Huh? Because they had to use all that, like they didn't know yeah. the time. Uh, you, you had to look ahead, right? <laughs> so there you go, okay. So you can print that out to yourself. All right, so one last really useful and am i going to figure out how to do this okay so we picked three houses we wanted to show and you were not very pretend you were not very good with directions or maybe you were in an area that you're not familiar with my personal opinion is print out that map page i had so you can kind of decide where you want to go so you're not zigzagging all over the place mm -hmm. however for those that are even more directionally challenged 
they made something called directions. I love this. Click on the direction button. I'm going to pick one more, by the way. I'm going to pick one more house. Oh, so I'll shoot you. I'm going to pick this. I'm going to hit directions and watch what it does. It has decided for me where I should go in the order. But wait, 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 wait. We're meeting at the office. Let's pretend I can put a start point. And so I'm going to put that we started here at the office. Did it find it? Yes. And then um, why is it not giving me directions? Directions. Here it comes. There you go. Awesome. We started started at the office number, which is number one, and then it's going to take us to number two, three, and four. And now you can see why I love selling houses in Downey because look at that. Look how close they all were to each other. Of course, we did cheat and use only North Downey. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, but wait a second. You did the search. You stopped, and one agent said to you, "The seller said, please don't come first." Come to me last. Damn. So what do I do? I can. So the 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 one on VM read wanted me to go last. So watch this. I switch the order. And then I click on directions again. All has been restored in the world. Wait, show me that again. You so the... you you just highlight it highlight. and then go up or down. Oh, oh, to position, to it, position it. it. The client wants to see that one at the beginning and end it with another one. Yeah, or I mean, it's usually it's usually the agent that screws you up because of the homeowner's schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to come at two or, you know. Okay. And so then if, um, if you remember MapQuest, I like to say that this is really... Um, this is the MLS's version of MapQuest because you can print it out and have the directions be dummy proof. Turn here, turn here, you know. Um, however, I please use your phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty good, right? Pretty, pretty neat. We can go back to results and so on. So that was good. But wait a second, wait a second. You don't want to tomorrow, you don't want to have to redo this search. So we can save it. There's a couple of things. Pretend tomorrow you did not do what I'm about to do. Pretend you didn't do that. You want to go and find a previous search you did. Here's how you do it. You go to recent searches. And it's there. All my searches I've ever done, I can just look at just like that. So right now, of course, we're on the top. We're on this one. Okay. So just a reminder if you don't save it and you don't want to redo your work for that client you can hit recent searches okay however two ways you can two ways you can save stuff by the way one more thing sorry refine if i want to narrow if i don't want to have to look at all nine and i only want to look at just these three that i picked i hit refine and i hit narrow and it goes away. Or if I want to get rid of these three, I hit discard. If I want to sort it differently. So that's what refine is. Save. Hmm? Is so right, it's right next to the action button. So here's the action button that we used first. Um, okay, by the way, on the on the um, action button, we, we talked about directions. We talked about a few of them. We can use it. We can do a CMA right from here, which is what we're going to do another day. But you can also look at stats. So here we can look at a table of the data of those three homes so if you picked a bunch of houses or I, I selected all i can see the averages and because we didn't pick any solds it's a little lame but i use this a lot when i'm trying to do sold data for like the month i can just go here if i don't want if i don't want to use info sparks i go here so they're um, listed uh but those are just the facts that's just the summary of the minimum, maximum prices, the average price, the median price, oh. that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that was that. And then refine. 
So back to the refine, we got that. And then the last one is save. Okay, so you wanna save the search. So what I started doing lately is doing more saved searches, but you could also set an automatic email. This automatic email, the problem about the automatic email is that's more email you're going to get. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So if you if you set it up that way, like for example, I have a downy new or revised email that comes to me. And after a while, it goes right over my head. I don't even notice it. Like I don't even pay attention. Yeah. So I started to find like instead of doing that, let me just set up the search. And then that means that I have to go into my saved searches and look, but it's kind of nice because it's it's just easier to navigate. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you both. I'll start with a new auto email. So you have to put the name of the client in first. Sorry. Or you can just look here. So I'm going to do this. Do I not even have myself in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's You're just call top let's top just call it one. Downy New, huh? You're right. Thank you. Okay. So we got that there, set it up. i what do I want to call the the first message? Um new listings in North Downey and so on. So that's what I'm setting up. And then I can tell the person how often I want, I can tell the computer how often to send listings to the client. And I can also make it where I get a copy of it, of course. Um, so right now it's set up, the default is to get it every morning. You're gonna get it, the MLS is gonna send you a, a new email each morning with anything new that's in this search. You can do it ASAP also. You can do ASAP, sorry. So ASAP, man, you're gonna get emails every time. Every time the MLS coughs or sneezes, you're gonna get an email. So it kind of it kind of gets annoying, okay? But that's that's that. And then also you can you can set up the welcome message to your client, and then you can set up the recurring message that the client every time the client gets an email, you can change it to whatever you want. Okay, and that's how you do that, and you can have it. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit down. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, right there. Settings make concierge. So that part. Okay. Is so this part is if I want to look at the listing first before I send it to my client, I should have said that. The reason we don't have it is because right now it's set up to come to me. So let's pretend we send it to somebody else. Now it's enabled. So if I do that and I hit enable concierge mode, you can make it, the, it says the following, concierge modes alerts you automatically when there's a new search and you can decide whether the email gets sent along back along. So you can review the new listing first. If you want to deny it, you can not keep, not pass it on and just say, oh, that's crap. And I don't want to send it to my client. Or you just keep going from there. Okay. So that's what, that's what that's about. Okay. Um, the reverse prospecting is the following. Reverse prospecting allows another agent to see your search. Okay, that's why I've been receiving <clears throat> calls from agents? Calls, texts, and emails for yes. their listings. Right. So I called it like they can't see well, I don't know if they can see can they see can they see Alfredo Barajas? Yeah, but I use my 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 phone number. You put you're right, right, right. I don't use right, right, right. But I mean can they see the name of my contact? I mean they can't see the information, but could they see so could they end up, so here's what it is. The agent on reverse prospecting gets a notification that Michael Berdellis did a search for Alfredo Barajas and Alfredo's search that I set up is a match for his, his or her listing. So that agent text messages or calls me to say, hey, you have a client named Alfredo Barajas and my listing at 123 Main Street is a perfect match. Have you shared it with Alfredo? Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. that's a little much for me. Okay. So it was very, it was to avoid it, just don't put it. Don't put, do not put make available for reverse prospecting. So it's just informing the listing agent. 
It's informing the listing agent that you have a prospect that their listing may be a match for. Holy cow. That's too much. All right. So that's that. I'm not going to save it because poor Alfredo doesn't need to get another email from me. All right. However, save searches. So here it goes. So I name it. And I'm going to name it North Downey under 1 million. Or I can name it for Alfredo. I can do whatever I want. Okay. And when I hit save, I would like to share with you what it looks like. Here it goes. You go to my matrix. You go to save searches. You go to, what the heck did I call it? North Downey under a million. Yeah. Alphabetized. I click on it. I click on the hyperlink. It brings me all this good information. And then I can click results. I can hit criteria and change it and what have you. Here's the part I love about save searches more than anything else. Yesterday I looked and I looked at houses. I went into this and I looked at the new stuff. The next day when I go in, if there's anything changed, anything new since the last time I went in, all I have to do is click on date since. And it will only give me the listings since the last time I came to the search. So I don't have to see all the other crap, which is kind of nice. So if you're doing a search that's really big and you have like 45 listings, you don't want to have to look at all 45 listings every single time. If you click date since, you will only see the listings that came on the market, back on the market, price change since last time I looked at the search. So that is pretty darn useful because it just saves you a little bit of time. And do you know how can we change or edit the search? Yes, <laughs> criteria. Okay. So I'm going to do it, okay? Get criteria and you just go do whatever you want. So in, in my case, they told me they want to go up to 1-1 one, one instead. And yes, I know that my search says up to a million and we're about to change that, but whatever. Okay, there you go. And then when you're done, you click save and it's saved forever. And now, now it shows one, one instead of a million. Okay. Even though my darn search up there says a million, but can I change that? Wait, wait, wait. Like for example, I can. And you know what happened? Uh, my client wanted uh, like 15 miles area ratio residential. So it took me a while to right. start going. Hmm? Yeah, it took a while yeah, to get it all set up. Did you go up to 2,500? 2, well, you gosh, could you imagine looking at 2,500 listings? So, I mean, if you're looking at 2,500 listings, you just haven't ha come up with enough stuff to, to narrow it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that idea and we're going to do the following. How are we doing on time? Okay. So here, here we go. We're going to do one more search. Active. House. Downey. Um, I'm going to do three bedroom or more, two bath or more, and I don't have a price range. Just, just we'll stay here, okay? But um, you know what? Forget it. Three bedroom, two bath, over 1,500 square feet, no city, but they can go to one, two. Sorry. They can go to one, two. I got 2,500. I've got too many. But it was because that you wanted to look at the map. And so now I'm going to show you guys the map. Here it goes. Um. For the sake of your eyes and my eyes, I'm going to change this and I'm going to just do the map. So it's not going to, it's, it's a little easier to see. So I don't have to see the satellite version. Okay. So here's what I want to show you. So these are all the listings all over town, all over the place. You can see we've got Whittier over there. Um, and I want to do a map search. Um, so I want to share with you a few things that you can do. Um, 
I'm gonna go back to criteria. So you can do right here, I could put a certain spot and I can do 15 miles from a certain spot. So if they tell you they wanna be 15 miles from a certain location, I can do it here. So they, yeah. yeah. This is number one. I, I promise you there's gonna be some cool bells and whistles coming up. Okay, and then they tell you we wanna be five miles away. Okay, that, that was good. And just to show you on the map, that's what it looks like on the map. Okay. I'm gonna, how do I undo it? How do I delete it? I hover over and I can delete it. Or I could have done it from the criteria and just change it. Or I can do this. I can do that. Showing the miles, okay. One more thing. Let's say you wanna go the opposite way. Let's say you, you don't want this area. You do not want this circle. You can exclude it. Now, what have I done? It's going to give me every all the listings not in that circle. <laughs> I can do the opposite. Okay. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to delete it. Now we're back to square one. There we go. All right. So now here comes the fun. We did circle. By the way, you can pick a circle here and just do it. You can draw, which is what I'm going to do. So they tell you, they, they wanna be north of Firestone and Downey only. So I can hit the draw polygon and they're also very snooty. They don't wanna go on the other side of the 605 and they don't wanna go on the other side of the five freeway, real snobs, just kidding. And so you can look at this and then you can look at your results just like that. Now, one other really cool part is you can do this. You can hover right over. You can hover right over the listing. I'll show you this. Come on. And do this and look at it this way. So if you don't want to go to the map, you can do it this way. And then you can always come back to it like that. Okay. Okay. All right, that is that. Or I get this every once in a while, just like I shared with you about, um, I shared with you with a circle and I did not, I excluded area. I could do the same thing. If I don't want to go over here, I can draw. And I want to say, I, I want to go not, not north of the five. They do not want to go north of the five. And it's just downy. And I, so, you know, so now I can exclude it, exclude this shape. So it's going to be everything not in here. And again, if I went back to my criteria, I know I'm going fast, but watch this. If I go here and I put Downey, it's only going to give me Downey listings. And if I go back to the map, it's all the Downey listings except this area. Okay. So now here's the big, the last big one. Um, I'm going to delete that shape. I'm going to get rid of Downey. Give me one second. I'm going to go back to this map. And your client says, um, I am a huge Dodger fan. Huge Dodger fan. Huge. I need to live within 30 minutes. Um, arriving at Dodger Stadium every day at seven o'clock at night. I need to live within 30 minutes of Dodger Stadium. So that would be, the address would be 1000 Vin Scully Avenue. You with me? So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to put drive time. I want to go, I want to be, wait, drive to here, right? I'm going to drive to here, Vin Scully. And I want to drive to here, arriving at, um, I need to eat dinner first. I want to be in my seat on time. 
I'm very, I'm, I'm such a Dodger fan. I need to get there early. Okay. I need to get there at 6 p.m. And drive to here, 6 p.m. on every, you know, I know it says every day, Monday. Okay. Fine. All right. Add. That is, that, that is where you must live. That is the listings, the only listings in the entire MLS. If you want to be within a, uh, oh, actually, what did we do? Did we do, did we do, uh, yeah. oh, 15 minutes. Sorry. In 50, okay. I, I want to give myself, I'm okay with a 30 minute drive. Okay. That was really close, right? So 30 minute drive to Dodger Stadium. Those are your choices. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right. So, right. Cause I was like, gosh, that's really close. All right. So now we've opened up the search a little and you can see where traffic comes and goes better. Okay. Now you're never going to get, um, if, if you end up with Dodger fan as your, as your buyer one time, now you're ready to do it, but most likely it's going to be where they're going to give you the address to their work and they want to live within a 30 minute drive time or, or hour or 45 minute drive time from the location of their work. And they want to get there at, you know, 8.30 in the morning on Monday through Friday or whatever. And you'll put in Monday at 8.30 and so on. Pretty interesting. And so you can do that. And you can, you know, just like we said, we can do go to results. And hit this. And we can go to save. And we can save it. Search you know, uh, Dodger fan. And there you go. We have Dodger fans saved forever. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so I am going to stop there. That's so weird. How do I do this? Did it, did it already shut me off? <laughs>